The NBA's free agency period opened up about a week ago, and with how fast things move in the NBA world, we've pretty much already seen most of the top available talent sign new deals, either staying with their current team or going with a new team for a fresh chance elsewhere. There are still a few very talented players available, but only a small handful, so in general, we have seen enough to know who benefited the most and who struggled the most during this period, and that brings us to today's video. Today, we will be discussing the four biggest winners of the summer's free agency period and the four biggest losers of the period based on the talent that they either acquired or lost compared to what they needed. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so please, if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. Starting with our first big winner of free agency this year, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder. In one of my prior videos, I will admit that I said I thought the Thunder overpaid a bit for Isaiah Hartenstein as his three-year deal worth $87 million was a bit more than most expected him to receive after being a starting center for the first time ever last year for just half the season. But his defensive impact is very legit, and looking at the big picture, the Thunder could afford to pay up to get him since he brings exactly what they needed. Chet Holmgren is obviously a very talented young big man, but at the moment, he's just too frail to handle the burdens of being a full-time starting center, so slotting in alongside Isaiah Hartenstein, who can be the bruising defensive anchor who rebounds well and sets good hard screens, will unlock a lot for guys like Shea Gilgis Alexander and Jalen Williams. The Thunder also re-signed Isaiah Joe and Aaron Wiggins to keep their depth intact, and to top it all off, they traded for Alex Caruso by getting rid of Josh Giddy, which is absolutely an upgrade for not only what they needed fit-wise, but just overall talent-wise as well. Caruso can be a secondary ball handler as well, and he's giving them yet another big boost as a perimeter defender. And now it's not even crazy to say that the Thunder are even better this year after a season last year where they finished as the one seed. Now over to the first loser we'll be discussing from this period, we have the Los Angeles Clippers. The Clippers invested a lot into the pairing of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George five years ago, and ultimately it amounted to nothing. The goal was to win a championship, and they never made the finals together, and now Paul George is gone and left them with nothing in return as he signed a contract in Philadelphia. When fully healthy this past season, the Clippers looked like legit contenders, but the injury bug held them back in the big day and it's hard to see the Clippers maintaining that same level of play moving forward without Paul George. They did re-sign James Harden, but it's hard to see a team led by just him and Kawhi Leonard in 2024 as legit contenders without any other replacement for Paul George besides bringing Nick Batum back, because the West is still such a bloodbath and the Clippers are losing ground to their competition quickly. This is especially disappointing because they're set to debut their new stadium this year, and they would have liked to have started that new era with a bang. Now back over to the next big winner of free agency, we have the Philadelphia 76ers. Of course, to contrast the Clippers' loss, we have the 76ers' gain, being the ones who lured Paul George away. The Sixers set themselves up where this offseason was pretty much home run or bust, because they had more cap space than anybody but the Pistons to spend this summer, and they had endless amounts of options to build around Joel Embiid with. If they failed to make big splashes, then it could have been the beginning of the end, but they nailed it, signing George to go all in over the next few seasons as a third star that doesn't always need the ball in his hands to be impactful. They also re-signed Tyrese Maxey to a five-year max deal, they brought back Kelly Oubre after a strong season with the team last year, they brought back Andre Drummond to be Joel Embiid's backup, they signed veteran Eric Gordon to be a scorer off the bench, and then to cap it all off, they lured away Caleb Martin from the Miami Heat, who played a massive role in the Heat going to the NBA Finals two seasons ago as their final big signing. The Sixers team this year is much deeper and overall better balanced than they were a year ago, and for the first time in a while, contention seems realistically within their sights. Now for the next big loser of free agency this year, we have the Miami Heat. 
The Heat's entire offseason has been one where almost everybody involved seems to be a bit on edge. Tensions between Jimmy Butler and President Pat Riley were apparent since the season ended, which has led to murmurs of Butler potentially getting traded, and even though that hasn't ended up happening, the Heat are still trending in the wrong direction after making the finals two years ago. They re-signed Bam Adebayo to a three-year deal, but that may be the only positive of free agency for them. They re-signed Kevin Love, who is probably on the verge of retirement, they brought in Alec Burks, who is now on his 8th NBA team, and last year he shot just 37% from the field. They lost Caleb Martin to the 76ers in free agency. Their current core back-to-back -back years has shown they're only good enough to finish in 8th place in the East, and they're not doing anything proactive to push themselves forward. If they go through yet another mediocre middling season this year, tensions are only going to rise even more, and they may have a rebuild coming sooner rather than later. Now back over to another winner of free agency, we have the Sacramento Kings. The Kings are the most recent team to land in the winner's column as their big addition that they made came recently by way of acquiring DeMar DeRozan in a sign and trade with the Chicago Bulls. DeRozan has always been a pretty underrated player who consistently gives you at least 24 points per game, dominating the mid-range and always being so fundamentally sound with his footwork around the basket. The Kings needed to get back to their identity of scoring at a dominant level, and adding another pure scorer to the mix is one really good way to do just that. Their strong offseason continues with the fact that they successfully re-signed Malik Monk to a four-year contract after it did seem like they were destined to lose him to free agency when their season ended. Bringing him back to continue to be their explosive sixth man of the year candidate keeps everybody happy, and they're now constructed in a way where they should be one of the best offenses in the league like they were two seasons ago. Now back over to the next loser of free agency, we have the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers offseason has been pretty forgettable, which is shocking because even though they did successfully re-sign LeBron James for another two seasons, they really haven't done anything else at all. And when LeBron James is involved, you typically see a ton of movement during periods like this. The Lakers' goal is to compete for championships with LeBron and Anthony Davis, but they were in the play-in tournament for a second consecutive season last year, and they got eliminated in the first first round of the playoffs. The Lakers tried very hard to recruit Klay Thompson to sign with them, but Klay chose instead to sign with Dallas. They tried to lure in DeMar DeRozan and that failed, and they literally haven't added anybody new in free agency. Running things back with essentially the same roster as last season, but with rookie Dalton Connect also in the mix now, sounds like a bit of a waste of everybody's time, yet it also seems like what is going to happen. So unless they cook up a big trade between now and the beginning of the season, they're stuck in limbo. And now for the final big winner of free agency, we have the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks took another step forward, making it to the NBA Finals this year, and they made it clear that they don't plan on going anywhere with the moves that they made this offseason. Tim Hardaway Jr. fell completely out of their rotation deep in the playoffs because of his unreliably streaky shooting and his defensive woes, and they went out and replaced him with Klay Thompson, who hasn't been the Klay Thompson of old by any means, but he's at minimum still a 40% shooter from three, who seems to really be embracing a fresh start out of the whirlwind that is the Warriors, and should thrive alongside the playmaking of Luka Doncic. That's not all though, as the Mavericks also added Najee Marshall, who I think is one of the most underrated signings of the entire offseason, as Marshall is an incredibly strong perimeter defender while also being a better shooter than Derek Jones Jr., who he will be replacing for them since Derek Jones Jr. did leave admittedly. And finally, the last of the losers of free agency that we'll be discussing today is the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets, for a second offseason in a row, have now seen an important role player of theirs leave in free agency, and they haven't done anything to replace them. Losing Bruce Brown hurt them quite a bit this past season, and now this offseason, they saw Contavious Caldwell Pope leave to sign with the Orlando Magic. They were already a top-heavy group with depth issues last season, and now they're relying on slotting in Christian Brown to the start shooting guard spot without any real difference makers coming off of their bench, and the only signing they've made this summer is Dario Saric, who can definitely play a role but isn't moving the needle at all. Teams in the Western Conference are loading up, and the Nuggets are staying stagnant while having three-time MVP Nikola Jokic, which is always going to give them a leg up on the competition, but they do have plenty of real competition to deal with now. 
And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below which teams you think were the biggest winners and losers of free agency this year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.